Well, thank you, Chris, and good afternoon, everybody. It is great to see such a crowd here to mark this important moment and to talk about Australia's true history. Thank you, Arnie Janine, for the welcome that you gave us all today, uh, and we're very pleased to have you here with us. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we meet here on the lands of the traditional custodians and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to acknowledge traditional owners and elders from around the country who have joined us here today to help tell the story of Aboriginal people who have been dispossessed over centuries. I and the Greens also acknowledge that sovereignty over these lands was never ceded. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. We are here today because this is a divisive day for our community. It is a day of dispossession rather than one of unity and celebration. As a, as a nation, we have not yet engaged in a process of truth, of justice or reconciliation one which undertakes a true account of our history and addresses the impacts of dispossession, marginalisation and disadvantage for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Australia's history includes some dark periods and it's important that today we reflect on these truths. Settler massacres of First People were widespread across the colonial frontier. Between 1794 in 1872, there are at least 150 recorded massacres in Eastern Australia of Aboriginal peoples. It would appear that almost every clan was affected. We cannot heal the wounds of the past by ignoring this true history of our country. Unfortunately, these are not just the problems of the past. We must also acknowledge that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in our community continue to face many issues of disadvantage here and now, including for many Indigenous people in this city. Changing the day to Australia Day is not about solving these problems. But the Greens do believe that it is important to make this symbolic change. We can and should work towards addressing both problems of disadvantage and inequity, while also working towards symbolic change. Just as legislating for marriage equality hasn't immediately changed the opinions of some in our community, it has sent an important symbol to all Australians that homophobia is not acceptable and marriage equality is the new norm. The Greens believe that starting the national debate about changing the date will bring about the same types of discussion and we need to set a new standard for our nation that says that it is not acceptable to celebrate our national day on a day of invasion. Yeah. Yeah. It is time that we as a community redouble our efforts to address racism and discrimination and improve the everyday lives of the first peoples of this country on the ground in very practical ways. I, along with my Greens colleagues around the country, will also continue to advocate strongly for change in the date of Australia Day. I believe Australia Day should be a day where all Australians can come together to celebrate, a day where families, friends and communities can feel both united and more reconciled. And January 26th is not that day. I still believe that January 26th is an important day in our nation's history and one that needs to be understood, recognising the invasion, the dispossession, <laughs> and the survival that are part of our national story. And I understand that some people here today would prefer that we kept this day as a national holiday and renamed it Invasion Day, or perhaps Sovereignty Day. But the Greens don't realistically think that the federal government's going to come at that. Uh, and so certainly we do, we do need to create a day of unification and celebration. The question of when we celebrate our national day goes to the heart of the kind of Australia we want all of us to be able to enjoy. It is an important conversation that we need to have and I'm pleased that it's now starting at a national level. I know that the Change the Date campaign is controversial and there are those who don't support it, but it has certainly provoked the national conversations that we need to have 
And it is important that we all together have these hard conversations. As a nation, it has taken us too long to learn the lessons of our history and to listen to the voices of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Even just last year, we as a nation were presented with an opportunity to embark on a process of agreement making and truth telling through the Uluru Statement. But our Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, refused to engage, refused to listen and refused to walk with First Australians to start the journey towards reconciliation. This is a terrible missed opportunity and one that we cannot afford to miss. So we're all here today to tell the Prime Minister and all the others who sit up on the hill that this campaign will not pass. This is an issue that is important to many Australians. Aboriginal Australians, Torres Strait Islander Australians and non-Indigenous Australians. We stand here together today to acknowledge the truth and injustice that has occurred on this day and throughout the history of our nation. And we are here to say that while this, there is certainly time to celebrate the many great things about our country, today is not that day. Today is a difficult day for many people, but it is an important day to take a moment, pause and recognise the true history of our country. I hope that through moments of truth-telling like this, we can find healing and start to walk forward together. Thank you for being here.